because you know in every web browser we see a lot of cookies they are do, doing their inherent job and they are collecting basically uh, data which are very personal i mean there are uh, usually most of the cookies are harmless and they are uh, collecting data and those data can be used to uh, give better service to me i mean back okay but uh, there are a lot of categories of um, cookies nowadays but there are some kind of cookies which are very very crucial and has the potential of privacy things like third party persistent marketing cookies because it can contain a significant amount of information about uh, users digital imprint its total online activity preferences geolocations and uh, this this since it is a third party cookie this chain of responsibility i mean it is not uh, the data principle which collecting your information to this cookie for the first time i mean who's uh, you are accessing suppose one website now since it is a third party cookie <coughs> sorry uh, that particular uh, website may not be um, using that cookie it may be used by someone else this chain may be very complex to understand and at the same time it is actually increasing their potential for uh, privacy breach now actually gdpr has said very little thing about cookies uh, because uh, there is another specific uh, directive that was also uh, came into effect from european union and that is popularly known as the cookie law and that has taken care of this cookie related privacy issues to a great thing until now that is accepted as the reference of uh, cookie related privacy issues so and it is already um, enforced from 2002 and later amended in 2009 so uh, actually it was supposed to be um, supposed to be converted to a regulation called e privacy regulation and it was supposed to come into effect this regulation was supposed to come into effect with uh, gdpr but due to some unavoidable reason it has not converted to a e privacy regulation yet uh, but still that e privacy directive is there um, and people are people and organizations are still referring that e privacy regulation to manage their cookies okay and any dispute uh, may be resolved by that and it is the e privacy uh, directive which has made some notable effect in website design I mean, if 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 you are uh, really working in website designing or web service design, you need to understand the privacy directive in a great deal because your designs need to be comply with this EPD. So there was an article I was referring that how GDPR or this EPD basically because in case of cookie related issue uh, that. most of the uh, regulations in gdpr are overridden by epd so this post epd and gdpr web design has changed a lot you have to understand many uh, technical issues to part of an web designing team so that your product gets uh, it gets approved by by complying epd and gdpr so cookie compliance is a major issue we you as a technocrat so no okay so receive you need to receive users consent before using any cookies except strictly necessary cookies and there is a small category of cookies that are strictly necessary cookies in order to provide the service and they are very much harmless uh, you can look into the, those are called strictly necessary cookies those cookies can be Used without any proper consent, but for any other cookies, I mean, nowadays you see uh, every time you open a browser, 
you were asked whether you want to uh, allow these cookies to provide you better service or not. And uh, it should provide accurate and specific information about the data each cookie tracks, what type of data you are tracking, and what is your purpose in a plain language uh, in order to consent. So this is this is basic requirement of any kind of informed consent. And uh, you need to document and store consent receipt from users. I mean, later in case of some dispute, you need to produce that in uh, front of uh, code of law. Okay, so I am talking about, uh, about from, from business organization or uh, technocrats working on behalf of business organizations but password. So you need to allow users to access their service uh, even if they refuse to allow the use of certain things. Maybe uh, with some degraded performance or uh, by sacrificing some portion of your service. But you should not uh, deny to offer any kind of service if I or any data subject or user is not ready to um, allow your cookies. So there should be some gradual service uh, you should provide. And you should make it easy for users to withdraw their consent. Because it is not that consent is one time. I have given the consent and uh, that means you will have the, you are getting right of constantly um, tracking my information, digital information. At any point of time, a user or data subject may want to withdraw his or her consent. And this uh, withdrawal procedure should be as easy as uh, of giving the consent. Like by clicking one, accept terms and condition, if the consent to a cookie is maybe given. Similarly, if I want to withdraw, this procedure should not be very complex and cumbersome. It should be as easy as the first case. Now, so, uh, I mean, to wrap up this discussion about GDPR and EPD, uh, here is a small suggestion if you, if some of you are trying to open any data science startup. So what you should do? So you should keep, here is a, a very rough to-do list uh, for, uh, for a startup and starting a startup so that you, you can uh, try to comply GDPR and EPD because you, I mean, in present context, any kind of service you would like to design will be under purview of GDPR or EPD. So you need to make your solutions um, such that it complies GDPR and EPD to be uh, sold in, in the market, global market. Okay, so the second thing, as I mentioned, uh, after GDPR, uh, let us move to the personal data protection bill. Um, as I've already mentioned, it has not become a law yet. It is, but expected to become a law very soon. Right now it is under the purview of a JPC for a possible re revision because it was tabled in the parliament after cabinet in, uh, approval on 11th December 2009. Now you can you can look in, look at this bill. The PDF of the bill is available here. Okay, I have given the reference. You can download it and uh, just uh, after after referring this GDPR, you will have some idea about the different notions of right to privacy or related term like right to forgotten, right to eraser, right to um, explanation, bias and discrimination and how to comply with that. So this is also, I mean, this law is supposed to protect users' personal data. And this has taken the reference of GDPR to a great extent and tried to tweak that um, based on uh, Indian culture and perspective. So the applicability, just like GDPR is formally applicable to uh, the, um, I mean, organization that are dealing 
data of data subject residing in any country under the European Union. Similarly, obviously, this is for India. Deal, this bill governs the processing of personal data of Indian citizens by government of India, companies incorporated in India, and foreign companies dealing with personal data of individuals in India. It's obvious. And if you look at the background of um, the, the uh, background of coming of such uh, personal data protection uh, law, so in 2017 there was i mean all of you know there was an other dispute and and a nine judge constitutional bench headed by chief justice of india jsk starts hearing the crucial case emerging from the other litigation and it adjudicating whether over 120 crore citizens of india have a fundamental right to privacy because this other database <coughs> sorry is supposed and many people think that it is going to uh, compromise the privacy of Indian city. Now, uh, with this case was started, and in 2017, others, a landmark decision was taken by the Supreme Court that right to privacy is an intrinsic part of the right to life and personal liberty under Article 21 of the Constitution. And uh, they had suggested that government should come up with some kind of regulations which will help the protection of personal data by using this emerging situation not only for other or all digital usage so accordingly government of india appointed a 10 member committee expert headed by justice bn Krishna to identify key data protection issues and recommend methods and that committee was established on July 31, 2017, and they submit their report, which is a draft data protection bill, on July 27, 2018, to the concerned ministry. So after that, that was actually the ministry has taken that recommendation and made some changes, and they put that uh, draft bill for. And cabinet approval after getting that they have placed it in the parliament and this process is going on now before really looking into uh, this bill since uh, i don't want to make you bias because when i discuss the issues uh, on that bill uh, obviously uh, i will be explaining my point of view i mean i i be judging the consequences of every articles of the bill through my point of view so before i i will make that i will ask you to go through the personal data protection bill because the joint parliamentary committee also uh, is, in, is in a process of seeking a feedback from uh, different users about the draft bill so that they can I consider any any possible changes in the bill so as a responsible citizen as a technocrat who can, who can better understand this kind of uh, emerging issues than and any any layman user uh, i would like you to uh, go through the personal data protection bill you can download this bill pdf of this bill very easily and you because this this personal data protection in Indian context, it will be different from GDPR a little bit in that sense that it will also, I mean, dealing with, dealing with personal data protection of users. At the same time, it has to consider uh, the uh, implementation from um, the business organizations who will be dealing with that data and also. Uh, it is going to uh, direct link with the government organization because GDPR was mostly talking about the relationship between uh, data subjects and business organization offering services. But in uh, PDP, where we have found that the government of India is also a, a part of this relations. So there is a multi-way relationship like citizen, uh, 
uh, along with business organization citizens with government of india government of india with uh, business organization so what i would like to uh, like you to uh, review that to try to identify a few important points of the bill that empower indian citizens or data principles in, in pdp domain the data subjects are termed as data principles to have control over their person so there is the, the main purpose of coming up some data protection law okay so how how much it is um, achieving that that will be a good uh, exercise to do and obviously uh, as i have said your your responsibility is twofold uh, by understanding uh, from the point of view of normal users you should also additionally identify the challenges that data fiduciary is or the service providers or organization delivering such data uh, what are the challenges to them in order to address uh, these issues in order to comply with uh, the propositions that are given in the bill and third point i would like to identify the points if any that may undermine right to privacy under certain scenarios because since government of india is a, a part of this particular uh, law now now it may be sure when they will they they are supposed to enjoy some kind of exceptions uh, yeah which will be apparent if you read i don't want to make you biased so whether that exceptions are justified or uh, are going against the right to privacy in certain so whether they have potential so we need this is a very crucial thing you need to understand okay so you just i don't want to make bias with my points you just go through that and try to address these three points and submit it so that after getting your views uh, i can portray uh, the discussion with not only my views but also incorporate your views too okay so till then thank you